This video is sponsored by TrueLearn. Hello everybody, my name is America Revere, Dr. America Revere. I'm an intern in general surgery here in the United States, and this is a video about how to study for the upsite. So about eight months ago, while I was preparing for the app site, I started Googling about how to study for it, and I noticed that there was very scant information. There are some archaic student doc forums and maybe some Reddit forums about how to study for it, but they're very old, outdated. There's like no consensus about which resources are the best and how to actually study for it. So I really wanted to make this video so that future residents and especially interns don't have this problem of facing a very, very important exam like the AbSite and having no idea how to go about it. I'm gonna go ahead and leave timestamps in the description box below so that you can get to the information you need and skip the information that you don't need. So every residency program has an in-training exam, which is basically a large exam that you take usually about halfway through every resident year to evaluate your information and knowledge throughout residency. In general surgery, ours is called the AppSite, which stands for the American Board of Surgery in-training exam. It's a five hour exam with 250 questions and you take it sometime in January or February. It's a pretty important exam because most residents take the exact same exam and then you are scored against people in your year. So when I took my exam in January, I was put on a percentile with all the other interns in general surgery. So it's a fair marker for how your clinical knowledge compares to your peers. And that's pretty important to people like your program director. It's also important for fellowships because fellowships have to rank their applicants and they kind of have to use any information they can, uh, including your outside exam. Now there is, you know, kind of mixed consensus about how important the outside exam is. But I will say that it definitely won't hurt you to do very well on your app site, but it might potentially hurt you to do very poorly. So I would always err on the side of doing well, if for no other reason than because you don't know what would happen if you did poorly. Now, like I mentioned earlier, your score on the exam is just the percentile that you fall in. So people who do very well have a higher percentile and people who do poorly have a lower one. From my own investigation and talking with my peers, it seems like doing less than the 30th percentile is considered a not competitive score, whereas doing above 50th percentile is considered doing well, and then doing better than 70th percentile is the competitive region. And that's where I fall. So I thought that I could be of assistance to anybody who wants to do good and also very good. So there's a lot of different question banks and textbooks and pocket books that you can use to study for the app site. I'm gonna tell you what I did personally. Now the best resource for studying for the app site is your general surgery residency. You will learn things on your test just because you did them or what were taught them while you were a resident. Theoretically, that should be enough to do well on your app site. But you know how competitive it is these days. People are not only trying to do very well in the residency, but they're also trying to read. So next important thing is you're going to need a textbook and you're going to need to read this textbook regularly throughout the year. I know what you're thinking. Oh my gosh, America, I am not someone who enjoys reading textbooks, especially huge thousand page textbooks about surgery. Yeah, I understand, I get it, um, but you have to. And I promise it's not as bad as you think, and as long as you do it regularly, you'll kind of be surprised about how fast you can go through a textbook. Now, there's three main textbooks that people regard as their staple textbook that they reference to, that they read throughout the year. And you only need one of them. Cameron's, Savistons, and Greenfield. My program uses Greenfield. I don't like Greenfield. I find that it takes a long time to make a very small point and it's a difficult read. A lot of people enjoy it, so there's Greenfield. I'm gonna go ahead and rank that third. The next textbook is Cameron's, which some people you know, consider the ultimate textbook. Apparently it has very great clinical science and it's a lot easier to read, but it is lacking in detail. So if you're someone who is looking for a very easy read with the main points, 
then I think you could consider Cameron's. First place, I'm gonna go ahead and give to Sabiston. It's very detailed. It has kind of all the information you're going to need, but it's obviously very large. And like I mentioned, it's very detailed. I'm about to buy it myself because I've been using Greenfield, but most people regard this one as the best textbook, at least in my personal experience. But honestly, if you choose either one of the three, I don't think that you can go wrong. There's probably other great textbooks that you could choose as well. As long as you have a textbook with current evidence-based medicine, I don't think you can go wrong because the information is basically the same throughout every book. Just a little side note, I really recommend getting an iPad or a Kindle to read because these textbooks are huge and it's just a lot more convenient to have an ebook. A lot of people like having hard copies. I don't know why because Kindles and iPads are, offer you the ability to read in the dark. It's very thin, lightweight. You can highlight if you have a pen. I personally bought that for my upcoming birthday. I bought a new iPad because this one's old and I plan on buying the ebook of Sabastans. I'll go ahead and link down below this iPad on Amazon. That's only $299. So it's a little bit more affordable and it's a great way to read. So I really recommend it. The next thing you're going to need is a question bank and there's two main contenders. There's score and there's TrueLearn. And there are some others, but those are the main two. Now I'm gonna start off with the pros and cons of both. Score is, the main pro is there's a lot of questions. Score has almost 2,000 questions, which is great. However, the questions are typically made by residents, so they aren't very good at times. The explanations are also very poor, and I might even say that a lot of the answers to the questions are very debatable. So whenever I'm going through score questions, I find myself feeling a little less confident about what I'm learning, because I either don't trust that the answer is correct, or I don't like the explanation. The next main contender is TrueLearn. Since I've taken AppSight, I personally find that the TrueLearn questions are a lot more like the questions on the actual AppSight than in the score question bank. TrueLearn also has better explanations point blank period. They give you well-written explanations that sound you know, very legit, and they give you links to the information. TrueLearn is just a better resource if you had to pick one. Better questions, better explanations. I think it's just the better question bank overall. Okay, so you read your chapter and you did your questions, but now you need a way to review the material. So the third most important thing about studying for the app site is having a review resource. Now, every general surgery resident talks about this book. It's the Absight Review by Pfizer. It's raved about, people love it. I personally find this book not very helpful and filled with a lot of false information. There's like a false fact in this review book almost every five pages. So there's a lot of errors in this book and it makes it to the point where I don't know if I can trust it at all. The best way for me to review material over or things that I've previously read or questions I've had is to make flashcards. Now you can do that with Anki, Quizlet, or physical flashcards. I personally like Quizlet myself because they have an app. And you don't have to use flashcards if you don't want to, but some way of reviewing the previous material is very important because you might think, oh, there's no way I'll ever forget this, but I promise you will forget it. There's just way too much information out there you have to have a way to keep reviewing the material. Another fun fact, during your ICU rotation, I 100% recommend getting this little ICU book by Marino. So now that we've talked about what are the main components that you need to be successful, how do we put it all together? I would read a chapter in my textbook and make flashcards of the most important lines or the most important facts. And every time I read a chapter, I would have more and more flashcards. Then after I read a chapter, let's say over the liver, I would do liver questions on true learn. It's a good way to gauge how much you learn from that chapter, find out what your weak points are, and practice the knowledge that you just learned. And from the question bank, you can actually make more flashcards about stuff that wasn't in the chapter or what your weak points are. So when you're done reviewing a chapter, you have flashcards over 
things from the question bank and things from the actual reading. And every chapter you have, you have more and more flashcards and every now and then you review those flashcards so you can always move forward, learn more, but also preserve the knowledge that you already gained. And it was in that way that I was able to study for the outside in only two months and still get a competitive score. Now I don't recommend studying for the outside in two months, but I did not know how to study for it for the first half of my residency. So I was kind of trying all different types of resources before I found the regimen that really worked for me. And I think it's a regimen that can work for most people. It has the knowledge, it has the practice, it has the review. If you guys have any questions, concerns, or even input about how you study for the app site, please leave it in the comments below so that we can all benefit. Because like I mentioned, there's so little information out there about how best to go about it. So maybe this video can be the start of us finally coming together and combining our knowledge. Now all the opinions in this video are 100% my own, but thank you to TrueLearn for sponsoring this video. I personally find it to be the most superior question bank for the app site that's currently available. I think that everyone will love it. It is the highest quality, the most professional, the most like the test. If you are interested in trying it, I have a discount code Doctor America to take $10 off your subscription greater than 90 days. I'll leave everything down in the description box below as well. Thank Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope that you learned something and you are able to come away from it uh, better prepared for the test. I know there's not a lot of information out there, but hopefully this video can guide you in the right direction. Like I mentioned, please leave any of your thoughts or opinions in the comments below, and I will see you guys in my next video. Goodbye, everybody.